Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheaton, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brightenyourdays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so happy that you're here back with us. Today, I have a guest, Judith Joy, with us on the podcast. We're going to be talking abundance, and I'm so happy to have you here, Judith. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) Happy to be here. Yeah. So please tell us, what is lighting you up right now? Oh, what's lighting me up? I had a very exciting week. Let's just say that I'm not a widow. (laughs) So that's lighting me up. (laughs) That is definitely the way you said it. I was just like, oh gosh, but it's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. You're definitely like (laughs) not a widow. So thank you for sharing that with us. And so we're talking abundance today and I would love for you to start wherever you feel called to with abundance and how you came to even be sharing this topic of abundance and creating your desires and living in possibilities and living in that dream space and creating it as you're now. So I would love for you just to speak on what is on your heart when it comes to abundance, because obviously that lights you up too as well. (laughs) Oh yeah. I think they're interrelated because abundance doesn't just mean that you have money in your bank account. Abundance is throughout your entire life you have overflow and things work for you. And for example, with my last week, my husband had chest pains and we went, I'm in the Bahamas right now. And so we flew to the States and everything just unfolded with ease. And we were able to see the doctor right away, had the surgery right away. Recovery was easy and we were able to stay at my folks' house and just, I was able to help them and everything just unfolded. And to me, that's part of abundance. The way to do it is to elevate your vibration. When you have the low vibrations of shame, blame, apathy, grief, fear, those things, you're running so hard in place that you can't even think about, oh my goodness, what is Is it possible that I can stop for a moment? Now you move up and you get to the point where you take responsibility for everything in your life. And I mean everything. And then you step into the magic. And once you step in there, the world just opens up and you have a totally different reality than everybody else. And I'm all the way up in peace where things really aren't bothering me that much. And I can just think it and it happens. And it's like telepathy is starting to happen. And that's really cool. But this is an abundance of peace. And to move there, it's not easy, but it does provide ease. It will take a little bit of work on your part. And it's totally worth it. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with us and taking us a little into your journey this week of creating that ease and flow for yourself. And what I wrote down as you were talking is what landed for me is all the way up in peace. For most of us listening, that just doesn't even sound possible, especially the mamas that are listening that they have that newborn child, let's say, or they have that teenager that's in the house and they're saying, how can I find peace within myself? with all the chaos. I'm glad you pointed that out. It's not that everything around you is peaceful. It's that you are peaceful, Mm -hmm. even though whatever's going on around you is going on. You know, like with a baby or a teenager, they're doing what they do and they're not going to change right away. But if you match with who you vibrate with and you're matching and you're matching and you're matching, and then you decide that you're raising your vibration vibration and you're going to be peaceful. All the other people in your life are now going, but where is she? I can't find her. So they have a choice to rise up to your level and be peace, cause drama, trauma, or leave. 
you have the choice to go higher, stay at the high five, or go back down to their level. It's all about choice. And one of the ways to get to peace is to close your eyes and imagine that any stress that you have is melting and it just is melting and you feel waves of melting. And the more you practice this, the more it will become instantaneous. You can practice it in the grocery store. You can practice it driving your car. You can practice as you go to sleep at night. You can practice as your kid is yelling at you. You can practice practice as you're making dinner. And it's not like, everybody shut up. I'm going to be in peace right now. It doesn't work. (laughs) You have to be it. And then the other people will step up to the plate. And then all all the circumstances in your life will change how they show up. It's so beautiful to point out that you can't wait for your environment to become that peace. Like you must choose it for yourself. And then you have to be willing to let the people that don't meet that go, or you have to ask them to raise the occasion. And that is where I'm going to be completely 100% transparent here on my evolution journey to becoming a higher vibing human. What I realized is I was dragging along the people that I love the most because I did not want to see them not up here because it was so good here. So it took me longer to get here because of that. And so my intention, what I said was I'm taking my family with me. I'm not leaving them behind. So it's not until just recently that I had to like, let that burden go and let that responsibility go. Right. Cause it's not mine to have. I could hear the people listening, having the same thought process too, because we're so connected to our people, our family, our friends, that we're like, we don't want to leave them behind. But if you drag them along, are you really giving them choice? We have the choice to move forward however we want to move forward. But because we have the privilege and the right and the choice, they do also. And if you can look at their choices as interesting, then when they do things that you're going like, what? I don't get it. You just go, hmm, that's interesting. But you take your judgment out of it. That was an interesting choice. I wonder how that's going to work for you. Like with my husband, for years, he has been eating fried foods and a lot of sugar. And I would make a comment once in a while. And then because of his heart issues, All of a sudden he's like, oh, okay, now I'm listening. Now it's my choice. Mm -hmm. Choice is made. Boom. I'm there. I'm eating healthy. But it was his choice. It wasn't me arguing with him along the way. And that's true when you have kids. Kids want choices. However, they don't need every choice in the world. That gets overwhelming. So, you know, you're helping your child get dressed and going, would you like the blue shirt or the red shirt. You've made the choice for them. Now they can make a choice. And the choice may be, I want the green one, but it's narrowed down. Yeah, that's beautifully said. If you're you're not giving them choice and we all have that freedom of choice, beautifully said. What landed for me is letting go of the judgment, letting go of the judgment when you see the person doing the thing and finding it interesting. But how would we let go of that judgment? How do we start to let go of that voice in our head that's thinking of all the ways they could have done it differently, right? Well, you start by practicing not having judgment when you walk down the street. Oh, look at that fat slob and blah, 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 blah. And oh, look at that. I can't believe they did that. Can you believe that all the gossip stuff, you just stop talking about it. And then pretty soon you stop thinking about it. And then pretty soon you're going, wow, that person has a lot of extra pounds. I hope they're healthy. I really pray for their health. And you've taken yourself out of the judgment. Now, I'm sure there's more judgment that where you just look at somebody and go, oh, what a wonderful human being. I'm not quite there yet, but (laughs) I can look at most people and go, yay, I I can see the potential in you. Mm -hmm. When my kids would have their friends over, I could see the potential in all of their friends, even if they couldn't see it. And as a mom, I think one of the most important things to be able to do is go, "Mm mm-hmm, and shut your mouth. (laughs) Unless they are specifically asking for direction or an answer to a question, they already know your opinion. That is so beautiful. The shutting your mouth part, that is a practice of itself, right? Say what you need to say and then, or just listen. Like that is the hardest thing to practice doing is learning to just listen to people without telling them all the ways that we resonate, all the ways that what they said met our life. Like, you know what I'm saying, right? And so, (laughs) so 
just listening, what would you say would be a practice for just listening so that we're able to just close our mouth, especially with our children and our significant <laughs> others? <laughs> well, actually, this practice isn't listening, but it's very effective. When the other person starts to talk and complain and whatever else, you raise your vibration instantly. And you do that by saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. I love you. And here's the kicker. You are saying it silently. You can be loving the person. You can be loving yourself. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you feel more loving, more at peace, more restful, more expansive. When I first learned this, I thought, oh, this is baloney. And then my daughter called from Boston and she was in college and she was blah, 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 blah. And I started doing, I love you. 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 Just as a mantra to get through her yelling. And then pretty soon she said, oh, forget it. I'll figure it out on my own. Okay. I had someone at a workshop learn about this, and then she went to her homeowners association meeting, and she practiced it with someone who was being disruptive at the meeting. And nothing happened at the meeting per se, but a week later, all of a sudden, this lady moves. Wow. So she's not a problem in the meeting anymore. And you never know how it's going to turn out, but something happens. And in the process, you are a higher vibration. You are at that love and it just feels much better. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that way, it's easier to ask the, to show up. Yeah. I was so mesmerized by that practice of, I love you. Do you think that I love you is the highest vibration that we have to catapult no. to? According to David Hawkins, who's the author of Power Versus Force and a whole bunch of other books, the consciousness scale starts at zero and goes up to a thousand. Right around, I think it's 800, is love. And then you have peace and then you have enlightenment. Now, I've heard of people up in the enlightenment category, but they're so far removed from people mm -hmm. that they can't connect. So I'm like, it might be fun to go up there once or twice to experience it. But I think I want to live closer in the love and the peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us about the levels in that David Hawkins book. Will you say it for me one more time? David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. Because that sounds like something we all need to be reading so we can learn more about this. And so we talk about the secret to abundance. You talk about the secret to abundance, Judith. Will you let us in on the secret to abundance a little bit deeper? Because I know earlier we talked about it being peace but I would just love for you to talk on it a little bit more if you don't mind. <laughs> okay. Let's talk in terms of abundance with money. Mm -hmm. I don't have any money. 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 Well, you've just told the universe, I don't have any money. And the universe says, okay, you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. You have to change what you say and what you feel about what you say. When you are in the, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. Oh no, the world is against me. Those are the lower vibrations. Mm -hmm. If you can switch up your thinking and go, okay, I'm looking over here. I don't have any money. Ooh, I have peace over here. Mm -hmm. Once you experience it, you know what it feels like. I'm melting, 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 <laughs> melting, melting. I just took a deep breath. Okay, let's look at, I don't have any money. Oh, let's look at the peace. And then eventually you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And the, I don't have, doesn't have as much power to it. Mm. So now you can say, all right, what is it that I would really love to have by having the money? Because it's not the money, the money's piece of paper. What is it that I would really love to have? And then you start going, wow, I'd like to go on vacation. I would like to have some freedom in my life. I would like to have a little more space. And you're going, okay, now Instead of the, I don't have money, you put the vacation over mm -hmm. on this side and then you feel the peace. And then you look at the vacation and you're going, yeah, great idea. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a vacation in 10 years and I don't know why I think I can have it now and blah, 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 blah. Whoop, look at the peace. And then you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And the more times you take your focus off of what you think that the problem is, which is really the voice in your head and the feeling in your heart, and you go to peace, the more you're focusing on peace and you're going, oh, I think I would like a vacation. I don't care how it happens. 
And that's really a very big piece Mm -hmm. because so many of us think, well, if I'm going on vacation, then it's going to cost me X amount of money and I can only go to certain places. Well, what if you win a vacation in a a contest? Mm -hmm. What if your great aunt says, hey, come visit me, I'll pay. These are all different types of vacations. Mm -hmm. So keep yourself open to the possibilities of what can be. And then start getting excited about it and then get to the peace about it. And an interesting thing happens. Whatever you're worried about over here, every time you focus on peace, this thing over here is going, oh, they're not paying attention to me. Oh, I don't want to play with them anymore. I'm going to go find someone else to play with. And that can work with everything, not just money, that self-doubt, that low self-esteem, that I'm not doing a good job at parenting, like all of it, we can take the power away by practicing that melting and coming back and melting. And that is just genius. So thank you for painting that picture so clearly for us. The feeling part, you said the voice in your head and the feeling in your heart. How do we work with that? Okay. When you have a thought, it's one vibration. When you have a feeling, it's a different vibration if they don't match. And the thing is, the heart wins. So you're going to have to change your feelings about your thoughts. And you're going to have to change your thoughts about your feelings. When you get to the point that you want, name something that you want. $10 million. (laughs) What would you do with $10 million? Oh, I would make the world a better place. I'd make a big impact. I would be helping more moms. I would be helping my family in Haiti. I would be retiring my husband. I would be buying that beach house. I mean, the list goes on. (laughs) It's great that you have a list. And it's wonderful that the list goes on and on Mm -hmm. because there's an energy to it. The more you go into that list, the more excited you get. Yeah. Your heart gets all like, ooh. Exactly. You're not focused on the $10 million. I'll never have that. That's way too big. The universe does not know the difference between $10 and $10 million. We limit ourselves by thinking that it does. Oh, well, I'm only used to $10. So I can ask for 11. Okay, you can ask for 11, or you could ask for 20, or you could ask for 100. And then right around 100, you start going, (gasps) and at that feeling, you're going, oh, what's that melting look like over here? Okay, what's that melting look like? Yep, yep, there we go. (sighs) Okay, now we go 10, 11, 15, 20, 100. 100 doesn't feel so tight anymore. Okay, let's go up to 200. You keep playing with it, playing with the thoughts, and you're playing with the feelings. And you keep bouncing it against that melting feeling of peace. Yeah. That melting feeling of peace is everything. Yeah. Because even as you're talking about it, because the tightness is going to come, because if you've never had 10 million before, when it lands, that's why they say the lottery winners, they are quick to be worse off, right? Then they they... don't change their thinking. Yeah. So they have a lack of mindset and now you've given them more money. They can't possibly hold on to the money because they have a lack of mindset. So that wouldn't work for them. They have to get rid of the money so they can keep their lack mindset. And then on top of that, there's a certain finesse to having $10 million. Mm -hmm. You have to know that you can build it, that you can do something with it besides stick it under your mattress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be and willing to flow with it is the message as you're speaking to me. That's what comes through is like, you have to be willing to flow with that money. It can't just come and you can't just hold it. Exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. But you can't hold it. And there will be people around you that want to take it from you. And there will be people around you that truly want what's best for you. Mm-hmm. And they may help you along the way. You will have to hire a money manager of some mm-hmm. sort so that you can continue to make money so you can continue to give money. You can give all the money to 10 different charities and everybody's like, great, thanks. But that's the end of it. Or you can invest part of it, give money to the charities, grow the investment. So now you have a hundred million and now you can help even more people. Expansion. Like that yeah, just it's instantly, all about sharing. Yeah, that's expansion. It just instantly feels, it just feels so much better in the body. So I'd love to talk a little bit more about the body and how, mm-hmm. how the body keeps us stuck, let's say, or how <laughs> the body can help us expand. Because a lot of why we are stuck and have to do the money work, have to do the mindset work is because of the way we were programmed. And most of the time is when we were younger, is 
most of us know. So we are here now and we say we want this thing and our body is saying, you can't handle it, basically. We don't really want that. We say we want it, but we don't. So we're sabotaging, right? We're We're sabotaging because of the thoughts that we have Mm -hmm. and the feelings we have about thoughts. Mm, So it's not our body. Well, the feeling is your body. Think of it in terms of a habit. If you have a habit of having ice cream every night after dinner, you've built up this habit over years and years and years, and your body looks forward to having the ice cream. Well, now all of a sudden you're going, no, I don't want ice cream anymore. I would like a piece of fruit. You didn't make the choice because it was a bad choice. You just wanted something different, but your body is in the habit of having ice cream. And so you need to have a talk with your body and going, okay, we've done our ice cream. We're on to the next thing. And I love you body. And I want to take care of you. And I'm not saying we can never have ice cream, but I just don't want it every night anymore. And then you start changing your habit. And it's the changing of the habits that is a little bit uncomfortable. You just stay with it until it gets comfortable. And every time it's uncomfortable, you go over here and you start melting. And then you're going, oh, okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed that, you know, 100 years of ice cream, but now it's (laughs) time for a banana. (laughs) Oh, and gee, so... You literally have to talk to your body. So I was always preaching like journaling. That works. Is that a way of just talking to your body as well? Or do you, are you placing your hand on your heart? Are you doing some sort of somatic experiencing or what is it that you think would help us? Because the body does like, it says that keeps the score, right? So, so I really would love to hear your, your take on that. I'm not sure the body keeps score as much as it's just in a habit. It depends on your personality. Some people, like myself, like to write. Some people like to dance. And some people like to hug their bodies. And some people stand out in the wind with their arms out and going, woo, you know, <laughs> letting everything flow through. It's whatever you choose to do. And by the way, when you journal, there are a million different kinds of journaling. You can journal about these are all my problems. But what you're doing is focusing on your problems and what you focus on is what you get. Mm. Or you can go, I'm going to write this one time to get it out of my head. And then I'm going to be so incredibly grateful for it. You know, even though it's a problem, I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. And when I was learning about this one, I was going through a divorce and I had to write about why I was grateful for the mistress. And when I got to, she took him off my hands. Oh my God. I love her. She's great. (laughs) Totally switched my thinking. <laughs> oh, and my I love God. her to this day. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes, that gratitude practice. When you say it at first, I was like, how are we going to be grateful for our problems? But you're writing the gratitude list. You're just letting it flow out of you. So it's almost yeah. like a meditation. Even if it's stupid stuff. You know, I, I was grateful that she was in China. Okay, no big hit there. You know, I was grateful that I can handle raising the kids by myself. I was grateful, you know, blah, 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 blah. But that feeling of she took him off my hands, it was like, ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. (laughs) Do you say relief is on the, where would you say relief is on that, that consciousness scale as the vibrations that we vibrate? Because a lot of times when I'm doing my journaling and I'm dumping and I'm releasing, I feel so that feeling of relief, but I'm not sure is we want to go higher than that feeling of relief, would you say? Well, the feeling of relief is your body going, ah, I've just let it go. Now, if you're depressed and you work up to anger, while anger still is not fun, it is a higher vibration than depression. And pride is a higher vibration than anger. The military has so many people being very proud of who they are, and that works. And since most people are down in the fear, shame, blame, depression, apathy, grief, you know, really low vibe, that moving up to pride, that's a huge thing, but there's so much beyond it. Yeah. So we have to just keep moving. And I love how you paint the picture that you get to go slowly from where you are. So it's every day, it's going to be a different day in the body, (laughs) a different day in your mind also, right? It can be. And the thing is, you're not always one vibration. Even the you know highest vibe people, they can sink down to something. You know, they can have a bad day. You can wake up in a bad mood. <sighs> the thing is, do you choose to stay in that bad mood or do you choose to go, I'm on my way to peace? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's melt and let's be there. And then you might have to go back and forth and you might not get to peace that day, but you know you're headed there. 
And if you have a whole string of days headed there, you're much more likely to get there than if you don't focus on it at all. So that brings me up to feeling the feelings. For so long, I lived in the fake it till you make it. I'm just going to fake it. I'm just going to shove it down. I'm just going to be the happiest, most positive person in the world. And then it came time where that wasn't serving me and I had to feel my feelings and I had to go and get deep underground and feel those feels. And so how powerful is it with meditation and or not meditation, manifestation and feeling your feelings? It's very important. It's very important to feel what you have stuffed down into your body. You know, think of it in terms of, oh, so-and-so yelled at me, you know, my dad yelled at me and it really upset me, but I couldn't respond to him. So I stuffed it into my hip and Aunt Mary was abusive to me. Well, I stuffed that in my tummy. Well, at some point you've got all these other people and your reactions to them Mm. stuffed in your body and it's time to let it go. And one of the easiest ways is to imagine that it's in there and turning to smoke and just Mm. leaving. Or you could imagine it's on a blackboard and you have a giant eraser Mm. and you're erasing, or you can send it to the violet fire or the central sun, or, but you're doing something with it instead of holding it on. I can't express this. I can't express this. Yeah. So do you have to allow yourself to cry and release or is that just a myth that we're told that you have to cry it out to get it out that's of your one body? Way, that's one way to get it out. It's not the only way. So what you're saying is you can visualize it and visualize it leaving your body without actually touching it, touching the feeling and having it touch your emotions. No, you're still touching it. <laughs> but you touch it, you look at it, and then you go back to peace. Hmm. And then you touch it and look at it and go back to peace. Hmm. Then you touch and look at it, go back to peace. And it goes, hey, this body doesn't have my... Um, hmm. I'm not playing with you anymore. Go, I'm yeah. leaving. Yes. And you if don't you have really to want to cry, suffer in it. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want to cry, go ahead and cry. Yeah. It moves a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. Exercise moves emotion. Mm-hmm. Put a movie on, you know, that gets your feelings moving. It doesn't matter why you're crying. Mm-hmm. You're still moving through the emotions. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those release practices with us. Those are huge and game changers. And so I would love to talk a little bit about intuition and how we can connect to our intuition so that we can take the actions that we need to take and make the moves and create these desires, make the dreams, the possibilities in our heads real, like touch it, feel it. First off, intuition is not a big flashing sign. It's very, very subtle. It's just sort of that feeling that I should turn left here. I'm something's not right. I'm not feeling at peace with whatever it is. And then you start asking yourself questions. For example, my intuition, my husband rented a condo for us in the Bahamas. And I came here and went, I don't want to be here. I want to go home. I want to, and it was such a strong feeling. And I'm like, no, I'm really going to stick it out. You know, I'm talking myself out of the intuition, which is silly. But then he had chest pains and we went to the States. I came back to the condo and now everything's fine. I just didn't know what the intuition was telling me. So you listen to the little whispers and telepathy is getting so much stronger that you can think something and have it happen. You know, you can practice it on little things like, you know, your husband's playing a song on the radio and you start thinking, wow, I would really like a different song right now. And you just like get totally in line with it and fall in and you go, yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. You never say it out loud. And then all of a sudden he switches the station. But the intuition is your gut telling you, pay attention. It's up to you to pay attention. And it will take some practice. And one way to do it is to go for a walk. And when you get to the corner, stop and say, all right, body, which way would you like to go? And then you face each direction and whatever direction feels the most expansive or feels the lightest or feels like, yeah, over there. And then you go that direction and you're practicing paying attention to your body and you're paying attention to the intuition where this really comes in handy is after you've asked for what you want, after you have aligned your body with what you want, the next step is action. And if your intuition says, go take a walk, you taking that walk may cause you to bump into the person that you need to, to help you with whatever you want to manifest, Mm -hmm. where everybody else is saying, oh no, now you have to buckle down and now you have to do this and that and the way everybody else is doing it. The way they're doing it works in low vibe, 
once you move up to high vibe, you can have a different experience. Mm-hmm. So when you learn to follow your intuition, then it seems as if the whole world just is sort of lining up for you. But then it's up to you to take the action to get there. Just knowing that your intuition says go for a walk doesn't mean that you get to sit on your couch. Mm-hmm. It means put your shoes on and get out the door and go for a walk. <laughs> Why don't we want to listen to our intuition? Because it is such a... Our parents tell us, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Because Mm -hmm. they want us to do whatever they want us to do, not what we want to do. We just have to train our bodies. And then when you're out, you just ask questions. Like, okay, body, I'm out. Now what? Where do you want me to go? Paying attention. One of my mentors, she says, your fortune is in your focus. We're trained that they tell us where our attention goes, where our energy is going to be flowing. And so what you're saying is, that is our intuition. I'm saying that when we're focusing on the piece and we're focusing mm-hmm. on the problem or the manifestation that mm-hmm. we're tight on, the focus, we keep going back to the piece. You keep going back to it and you keep going back and you keep going back. And I like the phrase that your mentor has. <laughs> really good. <laughs> it is, but the way I internalized it and the way that you're painting it for me is so different because in my way of looking at it, my fortune is my focus. So if I'm going for this, this is going to be my focus. But what I'm taking away from everything that you're saying is that can be my focus, but peace and melting and coming back to that focus is a whole, then just making that your focus. Because if you do that, what happens sometimes is you're, you're almost forcing instead of being pulled. And so I love the way you just put it as there's a different way. <laughs> right. Well, think about if you're writing something. And you're this, I have to focus on what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I have to focus on this article and I have to focus on it and I have to focus on it, but you're getting antsy Mm -hmm. and you're going, no, I have to focus. I have to, but you're getting antsy. The antsy is your intuition telling your body to take a break and you may go take a shower and you're in the shower and then you jump out dripping wet running to your computer because you've got exactly what it is that you need to write. You needed the break. Now, if your whole life is full of breaks, (laughs) <laughs> got a different thing going on. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. Oh my gosh, this conversation is so good. Like so much nuggets, so much ways for us to create better ways of being in the world. Because that's what it's about, right? It's being the being who does the thing. And so, I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about how our our listeners can get in contact with you, can support you, can work with you. And then I will ask you um, one more question. Okay. I've got a website, judithjoy.com. And you get one of those annoying pop-ups at the beginning. And you just sign in there. And then once a week, you'll get my blog delivered to your email. And then the rest of the website has tons of free stuff on it. And there's so many things that you can do on the website. And we've got videos and articles and blogs. It's, there's tons of stuff, a lot of good information. I'm also on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. It's either under Yes With Joy or Judith Joy, depending on the thing. Yes. And after this conversation that we've had, is there, I know there's something on your heart that's left for you to share with these mamas that are listening to us today. Yeah. I'm getting to experience it again. My son and daughter-in-law just had a baby and they only live two miles from me. So they're over all the time. So I get to experience it again. And it's so much fun because I'm looking at it going, yeah, okay, that's a stage or that's not that big of a deal. You know, in the whole scheme of things, the fact that they prefer one toy over another, not that big of a deal. They're going to learn it eventually. My first mother-in-law used to say, he's not going to walk down the aisle with a diaper bag. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, that's too good. <laughs> it's all a stage. You just do the best job you can in the moment. And if you make a mistake, you go, hmm, that didn't work. I'm sorry. Let's try again. Thank you so much for your wisdom, for your heart, for giving us so much today. Truly. Thank you for being here, Judith. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it tremendously. I just want to give everybody this feeling of peace. So we just soak it in and you feel all of the stress melt out of your head, out of your jaw, out of your shoulders. It's melting, melting through your abdomen, through your legs, through your feet and you're returning to the earth and take a big deep breath and let out any stress that remains. Thank you. So good. So good. Thank you for that exercise.
Well, wasn't that delicious? Wow, so much goodness, mind-blowing skills that we can practice, mind-blowing ways to be a higher vibration. I mean, there's so much that was received from that podcast interview, and I would love to hear your takeaways. So please come to either my Facebook or my Instagram at Josie Wheatman. And let me know what you're taking away from this. I love to hear from you guys. My DMs are open. And also I'm here to tell you that I'm going to invite you in to a powerful one-on-one experience. I want to hold sacred space for you to be able to do these practices, to be able to really connect to what that peace feels like in a sacred space that is your time. I believe that when we create When we say yes to ourselves and create sacred space, that is where the magic happens. And so if you would love to get on my calendar, if you go to backroadscoaching.com, click the contacts and you can go ahead and book an hour session with me, totally free right now to be in a space that is meant to facilitate you going deeper within yourself, you grounding, you connecting (laughs) and truly just loving up on yourself. So if that feels yummy, I look forward to seeing you in my powerful coaching container. Until next time. Let me reintroduce myself and get honest with you. In 2020, I was motivated to change things up. The pandemic accelerated things that I was forced to close Josie Joe hair design after over a decade in business. I started my first podcast, Backroads, because I loved to travel and I loved the travel industry, and also personal development that happens when you travel, especially as a solo traveler. I got burned out after winging it with my podcast for 21 episodes and doing everything on my own. And I love to teach and podcasting was still tugging at my heart. And I got inspired by motherhood and started the current podcast, Make Life Fun, that you're listening to today. And this show, Make Life Fun, was inspired by my journey of motherhood where I just did not feel like I was going to be the mother that I wanted to be. I thought it was just going to be a hard job. I thought it was just going to be 21 years, 18 years of this like hard knock life because I've heard from so many mamas and so many moms how hard motherhood is. And so when I came up with Make Life Fun, it was like, can we make it fun? (laughs) Can we make it easy? Is there a better way to do this? And that gave birth to this show today that we are over 70 episodes now. So over two years in my business, I still felt like I was throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like I loved what I was doing and I loved how I was showing up and the mindset piece was on point, but it still was not working. I had done a lot of deep diving and personal development work and still nothing, right? And so I have to find a different way. I had to find a different tool. I had to find a whole new tool box of tools. (laughs) And I realized that I wasn't in alignment with myself. I wasn't connected with my soul purpose. I wasn't, it wasn't a deep soul full body alignment. I was moving from my head space. I was moving from a place of this is what I should do instead of a heart led, soul led. This is what I'm doing because it feels so good. This is what I'm talking about because it lights me up. This is it. And when you move in that alignment and you're moving in that way of being pulled by your vision, it's a whole new way of being. And on the outside, I still looked shiny and happy. It looked like everything was working. It looked like I had everything together. And on the inside, I was completely having a totally different experience. I discovered that I had shut down parts of myself because I didn't feel safe. I've been called too much so many times in my childhood that I felt my power of that too much, I had to hide it. So that led me to feel trapped as a result of hiding that part of myself that is too much for some people who aren't my people. The too much part of me is who I am. The too much part of me is it's the part of me that makes me come alive. The part of me that gets curious. The part of me that wants to push the envelope. The part of me that wants to be $10 million Josie. That is my too much. And I had to go back and embrace that part and reclaim that part of me fully. And that was a mission (laughs) and a mountain that needed to be moved. And so it was a deep diving journey for the last eight months that I've been on. And the results so far that I've experienced from this deep dive is that my husband's gotten a raise and he's 2x his income. I'm a published author, an international bestseller. I'm showing up in my business like a boss, like a CEO, like a person who is completely in charge. (laughs) and completely owning the space that I'm in. I'm owning what I do. I'm owning how I do it. I am owning my authentic self, my authentic voice. 
I'm connecting to my whole integrated self. I welcomed all of me here. I am so in love with all of me <laughs> and all of that. I have found all the parts of Josie that were criticized and beat down, the parts that were called too much, too sensitive. Those parts of me are here now and held, loved, cherished. And I am more than anything following my soul calling. I am saying what I want to say. I am doing what I want to do. And I am lighting up day after day, serving in this way. And what I want for you is to experience results like this. I want you to fill it up. I want you to feel so in love with yourself, so in love with your life. I want you to be walking your soul purpose. And I have openings that I've opened up for my powerful coaching experience. And I would love to invite you in to a powerful container where I am holding powerful space for you to experience the transformation for yourself, to experience what it is like to be moving in alignment, moving connected. And together we have a 60 minute session, this free 60 minute session with me. You're going to get clear on your soul aligned vision. We're going to dive deep and we're going to discover what is stopping you and blocking you. What is in your way? What is it that you can't see right now? And we're going to create a plan so you can take the next best step that has you taking powerful, aligned, soul aligned action that will have you creating your vision with greater ease because it's, there's a difference from forcing and pushing versus alignment and flow. And I want to help you get into alignment and flow and whatever it is that you're creating right now, whatever challenge you're having right now, whether it is you're feeling like you need more self-love or you're feeling like you need help with your parenting, your motherhood, motherhood is hard. Hard. Whatever it is in your life right now that you feel is a challenge, I can hold space for you to look at it differently and create a plan that helps you break through that. So you know where to find me, backrosecoaching.com. Go to the contact page and you can go ahead and book yourself a free 60 minute session where I promise you it is going to be all about you. This is for you to share and for me to listen and hold the space that you need to find the answer that is already deep within you. So I invite you in. I, I will talk Talk to you soon and thank you for listening to the make life fun show it's a pleasure to have you here thank you for being a part of this community thank you for all the times that you have reached out to me and told me what you're liking about the show and giving me your feedback because they matter to me i created this for you mama for you to gain wisdom encouragement and for you to feel like you're not alone so have a beautiful rest of your day and i will see you next time Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.